Hello and welcome to another update video about Ethereum. Yeah, not too much happening. Unfortunately, we broke back into the base channel. That is for now not a problem. So, you know, this is the base channel of the current Ethereum move. Uh, it was good to see that we broke out here. That's always a signal that a third wave is unfolding. Uh, we lost it, not a problem. We moved higher, good signal. We retested from uh, above, good signal as well. We saw a strong wick to the downside. It was bought up quickly. <laughs> Good signal as well, and then we lost it. Um, however, we have not made a lower low compared to any of these, and also especially not compared to the wave two one. So again, as I said before, as long as we are below, uh, sorry, above 1560, or in the short term, um, above 1580, but it doesn't make a great difference, does it? We can focus on higher. Um, we are, in my opinion, still in the wave three. The reason for that is if this had, be had this been the wave three, and uh, this would have then, this would have to be a wave four here. Yeah, this doesn't work because we get into the price range of the wave one, as you can see here on the left hand side. So this is not possible from uh, in, in that scenario here that we had a wave one, two, three, four already. No, we still have to be in the wave three. Then there will be a wave four and then there must be a wave five as per the bullish scenario, of course could be that we are not in a bullish scenario, but if the bullish scenario is to play out, this is how it needs to unfold. And at the moment, um, my view is that we are still in the wave three, as long as we hold above that wave two low at 1580. And only if we go below 1560, I think we're actually going to go into this area here between 1230 and 1440. That is the alternative count. Um, which I mentioned to you a few times as well, just to make you aware, because this can unfold. Yeah, and then as, as soon as we drop below 1560, you know what's probably gonna happen. Um, as long as we are above these levels, however, we can focus on higher, and we can currently see this still as a wave three. As I said in the previous video, the wave three target would be, is also not reached yet. It would be 1775 roughly in that area, yeah, as a minimum requirement for the wave three. Um, and then we should not, in a wave four, we should not go back into the wave one range. So what I would say if we say, all right, wave three will end at around 1775, of course, until that happens, we don't know where it will really end, but um, roughly there. And then we can also calculate a target for the wave four. That would be in the region between 1677. That's the 50% FIP retracement. That would also just about, just, just about, be above the wave one high, so it's absolutely valid still, and 1729, so between the 50% FIP retracement and the 23.6% retracement. Now that will move up should the wave three go higher than 1775. As you can see, those FIP levels, they also extend like a spring. So if we get back to 1775, then yeah, it would be between the 23.6% FIP level, that's the minimum requirement, for a wave four down to the 50%. If we really go down to 1677, it will already get um, tough because this is really maxing out what a wave four normally would do. A wave four would normally not retrace more than 50%. And in this case as well, if it did, then it would invalidate this entire wave count because we cannot with a wave four get into the price region of the wave one. Then we have to explore the possibility of it's if it's just another one, two setup or if we're in something different but again, as long as that low is holding and as long as we see impulsive waves to the upside, which we see at the moment, we can focus on higher. Yeah, that's pretty much the only update I can give you. A bit of a boring weekend, but the weekly candle close is approaching. So that will be an interesting one again, because usually you see something exciting happen around the weekly candle close. A little bit of short term volatility that can give the market a push into one direction and then we have more clarity where we are. Unfortunately, we also lost the $1,700 level. Again, you can see how the the bulls and the bears are actually fighting around this um, around this level. You can see the 50-day moving average down here now at 1337, going to provide some support going forward. And another moving average that I always use that's relevant is the 20-day moving average. You can see that this is actually down here at 1613. So that is also likely to provide some support going forward. So we'll pr protect the price from possibly going below 1560. 
Um, either way, personally, I wouldn't mind which direction we go. I would use this area as accumulation. Um, I wouldn't have a problem with that because Ethereum has already uh, completed the requirements to complete an impulse to the upside in five waves. And if it goes into that direction here in a corrective wave pattern, then we can say, all right, the five waves were already complete. We're going to see three waves down and then there will be, with a high likelihood, five more waves to the upside that should take us above 2,500 and yeah, way above. Um, alternative or primary expectation though is that we move up a little bit higher because this wave, in my opinion, that came up there was not strong enough really to support the wave five idea. It's valid though, it's valid, but I would like to see a bit more. Okay, and that's my update about Ethereum. Hopefully you liked the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And if you really like the content, then check out the channel membership. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.